Hey there, welcome back. In this video I'm going to show how I made Boss 2. I started off by selecting Boss 1, going to Edit and Duplicate, and that changes the number automatically on the end, <clears throat> which is really convenient. But mostly, I wanted to make sure that I had the same um, uh, attachments over here on the side. So the mesh filter and the box collider I'm going to change because I want a sphere. But I want to have the rigid body that's kinematic, the boss script, and the enemy stats script. And every all the other settings the same. So I don't have to remember that every time I make a new boss. And you can see that I'm starting to toy with a boss 3. So let's head over to... Well, let me show you what it looks like first. And I've changed it for the moment so that the boss comes out right at the beginning of the game. He's going to be a big sphere, and he's going to drop these mines. Now his motion is the same as boss one right now. It's easily changed. And what I want to show is that this boss cannot be damaged by these weapons. So there's weapon one. Here's weapon two. Not damaged. Three not damaged, and even the laser does not damage boss 2. Alright, so how do you kill him? Let me switch over to weapon 2, which is the durable bullet. If you shoot these mines with the durable bullet, then they start changing direction, which is their Y speed. And then when they collide with the boss, then they do damage. And you can see down here that um, collision did 50 damage. This collision also did 50 damage. So the boss is dead. Now when I hit done, um, all of the other mines that the boss has just let down are going to explode. And I'll show you how all that works. So here he comes again. Again, I, I set a, a zero timer for the, the boss just for testing purposes. Let's see, I need to get some of these going up to, to shoot him. There we go. There's one. Oops, a little too fast. Let's see if I can get it with this one. Oh, missed. All right, there we go. Okay, I'm going to stop play. Heading over to the scripts now. Here's the enemy mine script and the changes that I have done here. I have added this variable called from boss. It's a boolean. And this tells me the logic between um, how the mine will behave if it came from the boss or if it did not come from the boss. In the start function, I have changed this renderer line to only be set to false if the mine did not come from the boss. So um, that's why they are visible right when the boss releases them. So that's important for the boss. Um, going down here, <clears throat> in the update I have uh, to check if uh, about the boss being alive. So if the if not wave dot boss alive, so if the boss is dead, and the mine was from boss, then I want to uh, destroy the mine and. I don't just want to call the destroy function here because then I'd also instantiate a, an explosion. So I just set the current life to zero and then I let the mines logic take care of the explosion. So I don't have to duplicate code. The movement line stays the same, but as I mentioned, I am changing Y speed when I shoot those mines. So that's below. Let's see, here's the on trigger enter. So this is the mine script. So when the mine hits the boss, then I check to see if the mine was from the boss. If it is from the boss, then as you saw, I have this print message just did get component bullet stats dot damage, damage, and then I set the mine current life to zero, and the other, which is the boss here, his current life gets reduced by. Uh, bullet stats dot damage. All right, 
So down here, if the mine hits the player bullet, or if I shoot it with the bullet, then I've added some code in case one. Case one is for the durable bullet, or weapon two on the keyboard. It checks to see if the mine is from the boss. So if the mine is from the boss, then I change the Y speed. I reduce it by one. This can be balanced uh, with further play testing. But I just want to make sure that it doesn't uh, keep on accelerating every single time I shoot it. So I have capped it. I have this variable Y speed max boss, which scrolling up here is just some multiple of the Y speed max, uh, which at the moment is two. Scrolling back down, so I just cap it. If Y speed is less than negative Y speed max boss, then I just set it equal to negative Y speed max boss. All right, and then so that's with if from boss, and if it's not, then it, it just does this line down here. Okay, just like before. Let's head over to, well, just to show you real quick, the bullet stat script. Um, this is the script that I use to deliver damage from my weapon. So when I instantiate a weapon or a bullet, then I give it some damage, and then when it hits something, it delivers that damage. And so I'm doing the same thing with the mine. I've attached bullet stats to the mine to uh, attach some amount of damage. Okay, so here's the boss scrolling up to the top here. I've added a line for a mine game object. I've added uh, to the switch statement here in the start function. I'm just setting the boss num, so for boss 2, I set boss num equal to 2. Scrolling down to the update function, the movement is still the same. So for case one, two, or three, again, I'm toying around with a Bosch three, nothing to show today. Uh, so the, just like I showed in the last video, the boss is gonna go back and forth on the screen uh, in a sinusoidal manner. Okay, coming down here, uh, this is um, how I have Boss two do his shooting. So, I've added this line var clone game object, and I've this line for boss one didn't change. It still is instantiating a nanobot, but I just have it um, set clone equal to that in case I need to make some changes later on. But this is where I where and why I needed to add the clone variable. So I'm instantiating a mine, calling a clone, and this is so I can call clone variables and change them. So clone dot transform dot position dot y minus equals 1.5. I have to shift the mine down the screen a little bit outside of the boss's um, collider, his sphere collider, or else it just collides right when he instantiates it and does damage then. So that's not what I want. Um, I set the clone variable from boss equal to true. So that sends the information over to the enemy mine script that that mine is from the boss. And um, actually, this line right here is in the wrong spot. So this this line doesn't do anything here. Uh, this is why I had to put the if statement. I'll just delete that line. The if statement in the enemy mine script up here. So apparently, it runs the start function after. I tried to have that line here to set the render equal to true. Actually, it probably defaults to true. So that's probably what's going on. So I'll remove it here. Okay, down in the on trigger enter. So this is the boss script. So if the boss collides with a mine, then I want um, get component enemy stats current life minus equals other get component bullet stats dot damage. Okay, so that's going to take some damage. And let's see. Yep, everything else is the same down here. So enemy stats, I have added a little bit uh, in this enemy mine clone. So if the, so here's the from boss, if get component enemy mine dot from boss is true, then I assign the enemy curl life some value. Here it's wave dot wave time. Uh, it will definitely be changed later. Um, and I set the damage here. All right, well, that is about it 
So stay tuned for Botch 3.